Good morning again to everyone. I think our video was cut off. So let's uh, continue again. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for another blessing, another day of uh, your goodness, your grace, your love. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we're, we're still alive. Thank you for the breath that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance that uh, you will be with us uh, no matter what. I pray that as we talk about the, the Jehovah Shalom today, all of us will be reminded about the peace that we have in you, Lord, and that you are the God of peace, and uh, the peace with God is, uh, is also with us. I pray that you in, empower us by your word, and speak to us, O Lord, through your word. This is a prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Again, welcome back. And uh, we're cut short because I believe the connection is not uh, good this morning. But let me again uh, uh, share to you that our devotion for today is entitled, The Lord is Peace. And uh, uh, we will be studying the name. Uh, one of the names of God is... Uh, it's called Jehovah Shalom, based from the experience of Gideon, okay? In Judges chapter 6, verse 11 to 23. In the days of Gideon, the children of Israel were living in a constant state of fear, like we have what we have right now. I, I know, no? Uh, many of us are experiencing this uh, kind of fear, no? Uh, because of COVID. And uh, in the time of, of uh, the Israelites, uh, uh, they have the enemy called Midianites. So uh, this uh, once defeated enemy had reemerged from the east and began plundering Israel with an over, overwhelming mob-like force. So Gideon uh, was not immune from the surge of anxiety and wave of uncertainty that had swept their nation. Okay? And one... Uh, yeah. One commentator uh, named Matthew Henry, he writes no, that distress, that's the, that's the description. Because of the situation, Gideon was distressed while, you know, uh, doing his thing in uh, the threshing floor. No? So it's not a proper place, but uh, by the wine press in some private and suspected corner for fear of the Midianites. So, Actually, uh, during this time, uh, Gideon was in, into hiding. No? He was hiding because of that fear that the Midianites will come and kill all of them. So I think it's like the same that the same thing we're experiencing right now. Not the, the word there is distress. Many of us are distressed or fearful. So Gideon is fearful of the attack and worried about the safety of their families and the Israelites. So again, no? Uh, Gideon was hiding in the dens, in the mountains, in the caves, in the stronghold. So uh, many of us are like, you know, experiencing and uh, doing the same. We, want, we don't want to come out. We don't want to go outside because of, of fear of being infected by, by the virus. No? And today, the, the, I think we still have around 2,000 plus uh, cases no? every day and it's increasing. And it's really a fearful experience no? and the same with Gideon no? there's fear there's distress there's anxiety now it was in this season in the moment of the life of Gideon in the Israelites now in a personal and national unrest that the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon at Ophrah commissioning him to lead the Israelites and deliver them from the tormentors which is the Midianites so again, Matthew Henry writes that the day of the greatest distress is God's time to appear for people's relief. Amen. No? So I believe that this is the time also that we need to experience God, that, that Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace in our midst today. Peace is an antidote of fear. It's an antithesis of fear, right? So what's what's the what's the best medicine for fear? It's peace. And we need the peace of God. Because if we have the peace of God, the Lord is peace, will provide us perspective, wisdom, encouragement, hope, 
It will build our confidence. It will inspire us. It will give us courage. And it will affirm our trust to the power of God. Uh, so today, the world where people are increasingly overwhelmed by stress because of COVID, conflict, depression, anxiety, financial problem, emotional problem, physical problem, and we need the presence of the Jehovah Shalom that will provide us peace that surpasses all understanding. This is why those who are consistently, you know, going back in the presence of God and rely on Him for strength that bears the fruit of peace in our lives will what? Will help us, will sustain us in this very challenging time. So let me share with you three points again. We'll study and we'll talk about the Lord of peace that we need, the peace of God, and the peace with God. So what does the Lord is peace means to us? What is and now, knowing that God is our Jehovah Shalom, what does it mean to us? Number one, according to Romans 15.33, it means we can experience the presence of God. Okay? Allow me to read Romans 15.33. Uh, okay? Romans 15.33, according to God's word, it says here, May the God of peace be with us all. May the God of peace be with us all. So we need the Lord of peace, no? And the God of peace, because if we have the, the Lord of peace in our life, we, we have his presence, okay? Not only that, it means protection. If you have the Lord, the, if the Lord is of peace, if Jehovah Shalom is in you, you have protection according to, to Romans uh, 16, 20, According to Romans 16.20, it says here, The God of peace will, will soon crush Satan under your feet in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Wow. And, and the Lord of peace will crush Satan. So, so I believe Satan can use all of this, you know, uh, the things that are happening in our lives right now. He wants to destroy us. He wants to kill people. He wants, you know, to kill and steal and destroy people. But you know what? God is our peace. And according to the verse, he will crush Satan. He will destroy Satan and protect us. And also, not only if you have the, the Lord, the Jehovah Shalom in your life, you have protection, you have his presence. And also in First Thessalonians 5, uh, 23, according to this verse, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now it's, it's clear in this passage that God's presence, the Lord of peace, Jehovah Shalom will preserve us. So if you have the Jehovah Shalom in your life, you have preservation. No? According to the verse, it, will, it can preserve your spirit, soul, and body. No? Amen for that. I believe, uh, you know, uh, in this COVID-19, I know that many people are already died in the Philippines, uh, almost 2,000, and the whole world is half a million more than. But you know what? If we have the Lord of peace, God can preserve our life. Do you believe in that? No? Even, I believe, you know, if some of you, some of us will be infected. The question is, can God preserve us? Can God preserve our life from, you know, uh, from the effect of the virus? Yes, because of the Jehovah Shalom in our life. And number four, not only if you have the Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace in your life, you have protection, you have pre preservation, you have his presence. Number four, you have his provision, okay? You have his provision. According to Hebrews 13, verse 20. Allow me to read God's word. Hebrews 13, verse 20. It says here, Now may the, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of eternal covenant, 
equip you with every good thing that you will that you may do his will working in us that which is blessing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen wow so there's provision no? as the you know one of the role of the shepherd one of the the role of god in our life is to provide our needs so and lastly philippians 4 9 okay so what does it mean if we have Jehovah Shalom in our life? You have his presence, you have his protection, you have his preservation for your life. You have his provision and he has a promise no? that he promised to everyone who believes in him and everyone who received Jesus as their Lord and Savior and the Jehovah Shalom. Philippians 4.9. Actually, this is the, the, the testimony of Paul while he was in prison. Can you imagine, you know? Paul can say these things in the midst of being in prison. He was in jail during this time, but uh, he was able to, to make the statement in verse 9. What you have learned, okay, uh, from me, okay, uh, practice these things, and the God of peace shall be with you. No? So, uh, I believe uh as we receive ano, uh god's blessing in our life he will he will his presence his protection preservation provision but also his as we as we obey god's word in our life no the god of peace will be with us amen okay so the second part is when can we experience the peace of god let's talk now about the peace of God. When can we experience the Jehovah Shalom in our life? Okay, are you are you excited to experience the Jehovah Shalom in your life? Okay, when can we experience this? Verse uh, in 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 Philippians chapter four, verse one to seven. Again, the context of this of 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 this passage in Philippians four, verses one to seven, is even when Paul he was in prison, was able to exhort no, the people, the, the Philippian believers, okay, uh, while writing this letter, was able to encourage them because he himself, while being in prison as the Jehovah Shalom. Verse 1, according to, to God's uh, word, no, Philippians 4, Therefore, my brothers, whom I, I have loved and longed for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, uh, uh, my beloved. So when someone is experiencing confinement or imprisonment, no, you can experience God at the time that you are confined. And many of us are right now are being confined inside our homes. No, uh, some of us are allowed to work uh, in the office, but many of us are are just working at home, uh, living at home. We are not allowed to go out, and many of us have have this fear of going out. No? So we are now in our solitary confinement. And when you have this confinement in your life, no? you can experience the peace of God. Second, now when we are experiencing anxiety due to various problems in life, family, work, and business, according to verse 6, you know, Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every Thing by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So Paul is imagining is the, the people who are being persecuted or being in confinement. No? And he reminded them that no, in times of anxiety, God, the God of peace, can help us. We can experience the Jehovah Shalom when we are experiencing anxiety due to Okay, various problems in our life, family, work, and business. Are you in? Are you experiencing anxiety right now? You need the Jehovah Shalom. You need the Lord of Peace in your life. And num and number three, not only when you're in confinement, you can experience the peace of God. You are when you're experiencing anxiety, but also when you are facing uncertainties of the future of your life. According to verse 7, in the peace of God, Philippians 4, 7, in the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts 
and your minds in Christ. Wow, that's a very good reminder from the Word of God. I know that, again, when you're facing uncertainties because of COVID-19, probably you're uncertain of the future of your life, of your family, of your work, of your business, or whatever, your career. Always remember, we have the peace of God. We have we have the Lord is peace. We have the Jehovah Shalom that we can experience and we can come to Him and help us in our anxiety, in our confinement, in our uncertainties. Now, why we need, okay? Uh, I started with the first point, the Lord is peace, okay? We have his, if you have the Lord of peace, you have protection, preservation, presence, provision, and promise, okay? When can we experience uh, the, the peace of God? When you're experiencing confinement, when you're experiencing anxiety, and when you're facing uncertainties. Why? We need the peace of God. This time we'll talk about the peace with God. What is the peace with God? Okay. Remember what happened in the book of Genesis. Now when, when the, the first man and woman no, uh, was... Uh, committed sin and uh, fall short of the standard of God and you know uh, the, the fall of men started during that time and you know what happened because of their disobedience because of their sin all men were separated okay all men became uh, spiritually uh, dead no? and we became enemies of God no? so that's the that's the truth no? that everyone who don't have a relationship with God right now, we are called enemies of God, okay? Either you are children of God, number one, or you are enemies of God. So we need the peace of God because the peace of God will what? Reconcile us. It will unite us, no? will, will, will make us uh, become children of God. So why we need the peace of God? Number one, because of our sins. We are now spiritually separated from God. So if you believe you have sinned against God, it means you are spiritually separated from God. And we need the peace of God because the peace of God will what? Unite us. We need the Jehovah Shalom. We need Jesus Christ our Lord not to, to, to bring us back to God, to reconcile us back to God. Okay? Now, if you receive the Lord Jesus Christ already, means if God is already in your life. The Jehovah Shalom is in your life. It means you're already friends of God. You're called friends. You're called children of God. Not separated anymore. Wow. Because Jesus Christ united us. And we have this peace with God. We are not already enemies, but friends. Number two. Because through Jesus Christ... We are now reconciled to God from being spiritually separated from Him. Okay? Uh, now, sin separated us. Christ reconciled us. Okay? That's the picture. Sin separated us from God, but Christ united us to God. And what happened at the cross? The cross now is very important. Because of our faith in the saving works of Jesus Christ in the cross of Calvary, we become justified and declared righteous in the sight of God. Do you believe that when you put your faith in Jesus Christ and you believe his works at the cross, you are called justified or you will be justified and called righteous in the sight of God. That's why we are being uh, reconciled, justified, and united to Christ. And we have what we call the peace of God. I believe the greatest Okay, fear that we should fear of, you know, is to be separated from God for eternity. Okay, again, the, the greatest or the fearful thing that men should fear of is when you are separated from God. Because when you are separated from God, you will be separated for eternity. Huh? And you don't have that peace of God instead of he, instead, you will receive punishment. So I, I encourage you, brothers and sisters, if you don't have yet this Jehovah Shalom in your life, if you don't have yet this, you know, the person of Jesus Christ in your life, if you haven't put your faith in Jesus Christ, 
and accepted him as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to, to, to receive him in your life and put your faith in Jesus, especially what he has done at the cross. And as a result, you will have the peace of God. So in conclusion, all of us are filled right now with fear. Many of us, even me, as I go out, have this, you know, some some fear within me, no? Anxiety, there's doubt, there's stress, uncertainty, no? But you cannot trust the Jehovah Shalom because He cares for you and He promised that He will never leave you nor forsake you. It is written in Second Thessalonians um, that now may the God of hope will 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 fill you with all joy and peace. In believing so that you will be abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's put our trust in the Jehovah Shalom. Again, reminder, we cannot control things. We cannot control the situation right now. We are not in control of this uh, pandemic situation, but God is in control. Huh? So we cannot control the uncertainties, the circumstances of life, but always remind ourselves, let us be in the presence of Jehovah Shalom. Let us allow the Jehovah Shalom, the peace of the Lord, no? that we can, so that we can have hope, joy, strength, and peace to face each day of our life. So in application no? for our devotion this morning, I have three applications. Number one, I would like to remind us all again, do not be anxious about tomorrow. Okay? Do not be anxious about tomorrow because Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace, is always with us. Who will take over our needs so that he has a good plan for your future. Number two, ask forgiveness of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ, in the saving works of Jesus Christ, so that you will be reconciled with God and you will experience the peace with God. And lastly, in all circumstances, good or bad, let us always rejoice and give thanks to God because He is our Jehovah Shalom. The, the peace of God is with us. I pray that you will have a, a blessed week. And thank you for watching and thank you for listening. And may the God of peace be with us all. Thank you and bye-bye.